Young Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by the King's Band and music by Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Fine and Dandy. <laughs> my advice for the week to car owners. Don't let your car sit around with road scum and smashed bugs eating into the finish. Not when it's so easy to make that finish sparkle like new and keep it that way. With Johnson's Car New, the easy-to-use polish that both cleans and polishes with one application. No matter how much you've cut down on your driving, you still need to keep the finish smoothly polished to keep it new looking for the day when driving restrictions are off. And that job is a cinch with Car New... This remarkable polish is a liquid. You rub it over the finish, let it dry, wipe it off. Until you've used Car New, you'll never believe how quickly it brings back your car's original showroom shine. Once your car is sparkling with that smooth Car New polish, you can apply a coat of Johnson's Auto Wax or regular Johnson's Wax for added protection and to save on car washings. Your regular wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station has both the Johnson's Auto Wax and Johnson's Car New. Spelled C-A-R-N-U. Isn't it a wonderful feeling to get out the old suitcase preparatory to packing for a summer vacation? And isn't it an awful letdown when you can't find the keys that unlock the suitcase so you can pack it? Oh, you don't think so? Well, listen to Fibber McGee and Volley. But McGee, darling, why, oh, why did you lock the suitcase when you put it away empty? I don't know. It just seemed neater that way, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I can open it with a hairpin or something. Give me a hairpin. I'm afraid to. Huh? Why? Well, my hair might come down, and if I ever let my hair down... I might tell you what I think of a man who locks an empty suitcase and then loses the key. Well, gee, Willigers, I... Oh, I know where the key is. <laughs> Ain't I the rummy? <laughs> well, go get it then, dearie. I can't. Why not? It's inside the suitcase. <laughs> Heavenly days. I thought that only happened in comic strips. Well, comic strips are just exaggerations of what happens in real life. Yeah, well, I'm beginning to think our lives are exaggerations of what happens in comic strips. <laughs> I got that one out. <laughs> what are you going to do now? We, you know, we need that suitcase. Oh, I'll pick the lock. Locks on suitcases are very... Come in. Hello there, kids. I understand you're leaving on your vacation tomorrow. <laughs> yes, we are. First thing in the morning, it's up and away to the mountains. <laughs> I thought we were going to the seashore. No, I decided. You decided. Yes, I Now, thought... listen no, here. No, no, no. Don't argue, kids. Why don't you go spend a few weeks at my brother's dead ranch? <laughs> you mean dude ranch? No, it's dead, daughter. That's why I'm trying to round up some customers for the kids. <laughs> You'd love a ranch. You can ride or go out on horseback or go for a long gallop across the prairies or... Spend all day long in the saddle or take a brisk canter in the early morning air or... Yeah, 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 or go horseback riding. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You'd like my brother, too, natural horseman. Born westerner? No, born bow-legged. <laughs> Just got a letter from him last Saturday. We chipped in and bought Papa a jackknife for Father's Day. <laughs> jackknife? Why didn't you get him a necktie? Waste of money, Johnny. Papa's got a beard down to here. <laughs> Doesn't he ever wear a necktie? He won't tell us if he does or not. <laughs> well, I'll leave this literature here for you kids. I uh, know you'd like ranch life. You can ride or go horseback. Yes, right? yes, we know. You going out there yourself this summer, Mr. Oldtimer? Yeah, uh, Mike, daughter. Ain't had a vacation since, uh... Well, let me see. This is 1940. This is 1942. It is? What happened in 1941? <laughs> 
Oh, I know. I went to see God with the wind. <laughs> Now, listen, that wouldn't account for a whole year. So well, I sat through it twice, Tony. <laughs> Gone with the wind. That picture has played the Bijou Theater so often that the manager, Mr. Finkelstein, talks with a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth in my words. That's pretty good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I hear it. The way I hear it, I'll tell you in September. So long, kid. <laughs> Well, we won't be going to a ranch or any place else if I can't get this suitcase open. Bring me a glass of water, will you? What for? I'm going to pour it into the lock <laughs> and then put the suitcase in the refrigerator. Water freezes, expands, and forces the lock open. That way we Couldn't can... Couldn't you ruin the suitcase just as easily if you uh-huh. chopped it open with a hatchet? <laughs> or maybe use dynamite? Well, what would you do? Well, I don't like to be obvious, dearie, but if you needed a tooth fixed, you'd call a dentist, wouldn't you? Why, sure. Well, who would you call if you wanted a lock fixed? A dentist? <laughs> a locksmith, Billy. Oh, oh, I never thought of that. Well, where is there a good locksmith? There's one next to Kramer's drugstore. Luke Smith. Mm-hmm. Give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Luke Smith, the locksmith, next door to Kramer's Mert. Is that you? <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Is it? What's that, Mert? Left on your doorstep. With a rattle in one hand and a bottle in the other, eh? Why don't you adopt him, Mert? Oh, gee, I wish you would. Stop it, McGee. What business is it of yours that they adopt a baby? It wasn't a baby. It was Uncle Dennis. <laughs> What's that, Mert? Well, never mind. I'll see you in September, Mert. Yeah. Goodbye. Look, McGee, I have some extra keys upstairs. I'll go get them. And after this, when you lock an empty suitcase, don't do it. I wonder if brute force will open it up on me. <laughs> nah. Dead rat, the dead rat. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. You know anything about locks? Sure I do, I betcha. We listen to it all the time. Listen to what? Locks. Locks Radio Theater. <laughs> you know, my mama says that Cecil DeMille is one of the I nice... didn't say lux, I says locks. Like on this suitcase. You know how to get it open? Let me take it, mister. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can get it open. How? Give me the key and I'll show you. <laughs> oh, gun it, sis. I haven't got a key. That's just the trouble. The key's inside and we're leaving on our vacation tomorrow. Oh. Where are you going on your vacation, mister? Where are you going? Where are you? Oh, I don't know, sis. Most anywhere. The mountains, the woods, the desert, the seashore. As long as it's in the great outdoors. We got one, too. You got one what? A great outdoors. My daddy cooks hamburgers on it. <laughs> hey, that sounds pretty good. Why didn't we ever invite... Why don't he ever invite me over for some hamburgers? On well, you know, I asked him... <laughs> huh? I asked him that once, but he said you wouldn't enjoy it. Why not? He says you're so full of baloney all the time, you wouldn't have any appetite. <laughs>
And haven't you found a way to get that suitcase open yet? My goodness. Look out, Molly. Stand back. Over this way. What's the nurse? Face the wall a minute. Now, hold it. Ah, oh, doggone it. Didn't work. My last firecracker, too. Well, gee, what are you doing shooting firecrackers off in this house? Trying to blast the lock open on the suitcase. Lock's either too strong or the firecrackers are too weak. Heavenly days, it smells like the Battle of Bull Run in here. <laughs> open the window. Now, that's better. Now, what in the name of Shanghai Check gave you the idea of using firecrackers? <laughs> you did. You mentioned something about dynamite a while ago, and I called up the hardware store, and they didn't have any dynamite. Every so... McGee, if you ever bring a drop of dynamite into this house, I... Dynamite don't come in drops. <laughs> Comes in sticks. It ain't dangerous if you handle it right. Why, I and my cousin Ellsworth used to blast tree stumps with dynamite all the time. Well, I never knew you had a cousin Ellsworth. Uh, tell me more. Did I ever meet him? No, and you never will. <laughs> You see, I and Ellsworth were blasting stumps one evening, and it begun to get dark. Yeah. We worked later uh, than we should have because we wanted to get finished. So I jammed a hunk of dynamite under the last stump, grabbed up my coat, gives Ellsworth a kick, and hollers, Come on, Ellsworth! <sighs> Just goes to show how deceptive that evening light is. Why, McGee? I had put the dynamite under Ellsworth and hollered at the stump. <laughs> We were all broken up about that. <laughs> Particularly Ellsworth. Yeah. I imagine so. And that proves the dynamite is safe to handle, huh? Not around a guy that looks like a stump, it ain't. <laughs> but when you really know what... Come in. Oh, hello, Abigail. Hey, how do you do, Mr. McGee? And Mr. McGee. Hi, Uppy. Sit down and take a ton off your tibia. <laughs> Oh, thank you, no, Mr. McGee. I can't stay for just a moment. Oh, that's too bad. What's too bad about it if she McGee. can't stay? Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, how's everything in the upper brackets, upper? I mean, the upper brackets, upper. <laughs> Mr. McGee, I find your vulgarities and impudence so thoroughly unamusing that I must say, frankly, I'm looking forward to your 13 weeks' absence with an ever-increasing joy and impatience. Oh, you're sweet, Abigail. <laughs> We're looking forward to it, too. We're going to miss you just as much as you're going to miss us, Abby. You know, you ain't a bad little sister at heart. <laughs> no, really, Mr. McGee, I didn't oh, mean no, that... Oh, now, now, now. Don't be ashamed of a little honest sentiment, Abby. <sighs> what I was trying to convey to your somewhat faltering intelligence, Mr. McGee, was hardly a message of tender felicitation. What do you mean, sis? I was endeavoring to transmit the thought that I was happily, almost ecstatically, looking forward to your departure. Now, have I made myself clear? Yes, you betcha. And I never heard a farewell speech worded so nice, I think. <laughs> I wish you'd write that down in our guest book. Uh, well, could I write it on your shirt front with carbolic acid, Mr. McGee? <laughs> oh, Abigail, you clown. <laughs> the old moose has really got a sense of humor, ain't she, Molly? Well, it was awfully sweet of you to stop in and say all those nice things, Abigail, but we'll come back just as soon as we can this summer. Oh, yes, do. I shall really miss you, my dear. But as for Mr. McGee... I know, I know. <laughs> as for me, you can't come right out and say it on account of me being a married man. <laughs> well, so what? Molly knows you're fond of me in your odd sort of way, so who cares... Mr. McGee, huh? can't I make you understand just exactly what I... Oh, no, I guess I can't. Hmm? So goodbye, Mrs. McGee. I hope you have a splendid time this summer. <laughs> Sweet, I never realized she cared so much about us, Molly. <laughs> Why, when she went out, she was biting her lip to keep the tears back. <laughs> you never can tell about people, can you? No, now, for instance... Hello, folks. Hello, Miss Wilcox. I was wondering what... Why, Meredith Wilson, how nice to see you again. Hello, Molly. You're looking well. How are you, Fibber? Uh, hi, bud. What was the name again? Meredith Wilson, Fibber. W Wilson? 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 I don't believe... Uh, uh, you any relation to Peggy Wilson, that band leader's wife? Well, uh, I'm her husband. You are? Well, shake hands. Uh, any husband of Peggy Wilson's is a friend of ours. 
What are you doing in town? Now, uh, Fever. Huh? Meredith Wilson is the famous conductor. He composes symphonies. He writes popular music that hits the hit parade. He originated Chiffon Swing. And he's going to do the Johnson Wax Summer Show again this year and give Billy Mills a rest. And believe me, Billy's earned it. He's done a wonderful job for you folks. Oh, indeed he has. And we love your music, too, Mr. Wilson. Well, thank you, Molly. I think myself that I have a neat little combo... Hot or sweet, Chicago or Barrel House, classic or groovy, no boozers or chasers, have own tuxedos, will travel, bus or train. <laughs> hey. I don't get it. What are you talking about, bud? Now listen, Fibber, if you're pretending you don't recognize me on account of that three bucks you borrowed back in 1940, you paid me that back. I did? Mm-hmm. You mean I don't? <laughs> oh, oh, hi, Meredith. I'm glad to see you. Uh, thanks. I thought you would be. I just asked Harlow to bring me by so I could wish you a pleasant vacation. Well, thanks, Mr. Wilson. We'll be listening to you this summer from wherever we are. Swell. Incidentally, don't go so far away that you can't get this week's copy of Life magazine. Comes out Friday the 26th. Why, Harlow? Well, it's got Fibber and Molly's picture in it. It has? Yes, sir. And a double-page spread about what Johnson products are doing in the line of war duty. Well, we'll sure get a copy. Now, how's my picture look? Have I got that sophisticated look I've been reading so much about? <laughs> the ad tells all about how Johnson protective coatings are used on airplanes, army textiles, housing projects, Special wax finishes for leather belts, holsters, boots. Does my picture show in front view or profile? Because everybody says my left profile is... Believe me, that advertisement gives you a new slant on Johnson Wax products. We've got a sponsor that knows there's a war going on. Oh, that's great, Harlow. And any sponsor of yours is a sponsor of mine, I always say. (laughs) Are you having uh, just a musical show this summer, Mr. Wilson? No, no, we've got a wonderful new added feature this year. An old friend of mine, John Nesbitt. Not John Nesbitt, the passing parade man. Sure, you've seen his movie shorts for MGM, Molly, and heard him on the air. Say, I asked him to stop in here, but I guess he... Oh, maybe that's him now. Come in. Mr. and Mrs. McGee live here. Why, hello, John. Oh, hello, Meredith. Hello, Meredith. Harlow. Hello, Harlow. Hello, John. Say, I want you to meet a couple friends of ours. Molly, John Nesbitt. How do you do, I'm sure. How do you do, Molly? And uh, this is Trevor McGee, John. Hello, Fibber. Uh, what was the name again? Curly? <laughs> <laughs> Nesbitt. Nez is in Nestertium, and Bit is in Off More Than You Can Chew. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen a lot of your movies, Mr. Nesbitt, and I think they're wonderful. Say, how do you ever find all those fascinating stories? Well, I don't know. It's kind of a hobby of mine, Molly. I go around digging up odd little facts, historical or otherwise, that I think might be overlooked in the passing parade. Well, good for you, Curly. And now, look, anytime you need any advice about... Hey, excuse me a minute. Has anybody got a toothpick? Okay. Anytime you need any advice about what's good taste on the air, bud, just drop me a line. I'll be glad to give you the benefit of my vast experience. Well, thanks, old man. You know, I'm really going to enjoy working this summer with Meredith and with Wilcox Harlow. Uh, it's uh, Harlow Wilcox, John. Is it really? Well, I looked him up in the telephone directory, and they have him down as Wilcox Harlow. <laughs> I, uh, must have been backward about paying my phone bill. <laughs> you going to announce the summer show? I say, are you going to announce the summer show? Yes, sir, and it's as good as a vacation for me. We have a lot of laughs, and the studios are so air-conditioned, why, we hate to leave after the broadcast. Yes, I tell you, they're really wonderful, but won't you boys sit down and have a cup of root beer or something? Well, no thanks, Molly, but, uh, before I go... I wonder if you'd mind if I... If what? <laughs> well, I've always had a kind of a yearning to... Oh, no, it's ridiculous. Oh, what is it, Mr. Wilson? Well, would it be too much to... Uh, I mean, would it be an imposition if I... <laughs> well, could I please open your hall closet door just once? <laughs> yourself, Mr. Wilson, right in there. Yeah. Gee, thanks. Is this the one right here? That's it. Open her up. <laughs> thanks. Gee, this is interesting. <laughs> Men sing the blacksmith song. 
the village smith, he stands by the tree. The smith, a mighty man, now is he. He's busy as a big bumblebee. Reshoeing horses for society. He swings and sings as the horses, 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 horses pass. He does because when he swings the anvil chorus, all the horses laugh. For just as every dog has his day, the smith is back again now to stay. And the muscles in his hands are as strong as rubber bands. And the village smith, he stands by the tree. The smith, he stood for years by the tree. But now he's helping society. Since rubber went on priority, he ain't the kind of guy he used to be. He slaves and saves all the rubber, rubber, rubber he can get. And you can too. If you'll search the whole house over, we'll get Hitler yet. So bring it to the smith by the score. But you haven't any use for any more. Cause you'll pay a cent a pound for a rubber that's around. If you pile it on the ground by the tree. Don't recognize his friends anymore. Cause he's sprucer than he used to be before. before And he's climbed as you can guess Up the ladder of success But he keeps the same address Lock resists burglary, you'd think the suitcase was full of emeralds. Oh, I think you'd better rest a while, dear. You're oh, dripping wet. Can no. I get you a glass of something cold, no. iced tea, or lemonade, or something, no, maybe? Thanks. Just makes me all hotter. Boy, this is really a scorcher today, isn't it? Yes, and the summer's just starting. Yeah. I do hope we go someplace where it's cool, McGee. Yeah, but outdoors is outdoors, Molly. You can't have fresh air and sunshine without a little... Come in. Oh, hi, Latrivia. Hello, McGee. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? Fine. Warm, isn't it? It is. I tell you, it's hotter than a St. Louis sidewalk, Mr. Mayor. I'm so hot I could do spot welding with my bare hands. <laughs> what can we do for you, Latrivia? Oh, nothing, McGee, nothing. I just heard you were starting on your vacation tomorrow and dropped in to wish you bon voyage. Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor, and the same to you. Oh, I'm not going anywhere, Mrs. McGee. This promises to be a very hot summer, and the city hall is air-cooled, so I think I'll just remain on the job. Oh, you may have something there at that, Latrivia. I know I have, McGee. You go camping or traveling and get hot and dusty. You can't take so many changes of clothing. You can't have a shower whenever you like. McGee, yeah. uh, don't you think it would be better if we... Oh, what am I saying? A vacation is a vacation. Why, sure it is, Molly. It's just sour grapes with these fellows that keep yipping about the air-cooled offices and restaurants full of ice-cold watermelon and all stuff like that there. What's a, ca- what's a vacation without a little discomfort? Well, <laughs> I'll certainly be thinking of you out in a fishy-smelling rowboat under that broiling sun, fighting off the flies and squirming under your sunburn. <laughs> well... Enjoy yourself. <laughs> you know, Molly, I've been thinking this thing over, Molly, and I wonder if we... Yes? Well, I mean, gee whiz, well, what with the war and all, maybe it would be better if we... What do you say we don't... Oh, dear. This is the same feeling I had the night you started to propose to me and the hot water heater blew up. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hi, Wimp, old man. How's everything? Oh, just fine, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Except that I'm a little worn out after yesterday. <laughs> My, what a strenuous day. <laughs> Yesterday, Mr. Wimple. Sweetie Face and I went to a wedding. Oh. <laughs> the matrimonial monkey shines get you down, Wimp? Oh, of course not. 
It wasn't the wedding so much, mm -hmm. but Sweetie Face tied my old shoes to the back of the groom's car while I was still wearing them. <laughs> Days are brutal. No, it was just thoughtlessness, Mrs. McGee. A very harrowing experience, I should say. Wimple, I hate to keep repeating it, but the, you ought to assert yourself. Speak up to Sweetie Face. Be a man. You've got rights. Yes, I know. But my rights are so much weaker than her left. <laughs> Do you know that Sweetie Face never walks downstairs to breakfast? What does she do, uh, punch a hole in the floor and slide through like a fireman? No, she leaps out the window to the limb of a tree and swings down from branch to branch, just like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? Well, don't you tell a single solitary soul now, but this afternoon I saw the top limb of that tree almost clear through. <laughs> Good heavens, she'll break her neck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, have a nice vacation, folks. Goodbye. <laughs> Look, Molly, the more I think about it, the more I think we got everything in town here we'd need for a good vacation. Shows, restaurants, all the comforts of home. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that, well... Harry. You know, when those boys started talking about the air-cooled NBC studios, <laughs> well, I just couldn't stand yeah, it. Yeah, they are marvelous. Say, I wonder... Give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Who are you calling? You'll see. Long distance, please. Hello, operator. Give me the... Get off the line, Mert. <laughs> I'll see you in September. Operator, give me the Johnson Wax Factory in Racine, Wisconsin. What on earth are you? Hello, is this the Johnson Wax Factory? Mr. Johnson, please. Uh, Mr. Johnson? It's Fibber McGee speaking. Fine, how are you? Oh, that's good. Well, look, Mr. Johnson, uh, me and Molly don't feel just right about leaving you in the lurch for 13 weeks, so we... <laughs> huh? Hey, yeah, but you see, Mr. Johnson, with, with them air cool studios, we wouldn't mind staying here for... Huh? Hey, yeah, I know, Mr. Johnson, but... Well, let Wilson and Nesbitt advertise car and let us handle Volco. Or let them have the glow coat and we'll put on a show for Carnu. Yeah, but Mr. Johnson, we can't get our suitcase unlocked. Mr. Johnson! I suppose a woman gets as big a thrill out of a glistening new refrigerator as a man does out of a new car. It's not only a great convenience, but it's a thing of beauty in the kitchen. And it's well worth that extra care you're being asked to give it right now. I'd like to suggest that in addition to things like proper defrosting and oiling, you also protect the beauty of that gleaming finish. How? Why, with a coat of genuine Johnson's wax, paste or liquid. The same wax you use to protect your floors, furniture, and woodwork. Johnson's Wax guards the finish against moisture and dirt. Keeps it spotless, easy to clean. This is just one of the 100 extra uses for Johnson's Wax in your home. To take better care of your things and make them last longer, try waxing them. Your window sills, Venetian blinds, lampshades, picture frames, shoes, and luggage. You'll be surprised how much work you save, too, because the wax polish resists dust and dirt. Genuine Johnson's Wax is available everywhere in paste, liquid, and cream form. Ladies and gentlemen, we all want to thank you for another wonderful year. And goodbye till next September. Yes, we know you're going to enjoy the Johnson Wax Summer Show with Meredith Wilson and John Nesbitt and Harla Wilcox. And we hope that... McGee, what are you doing with my best perfume? Spray in the audience. <laughs> yeah, but what for? Well, you know what George M. Cohan says. Always leave him smelling when you say goodbye. No, no, dearie. He didn't say smelling. He said smiling. He did? Oh, excuse me. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Fibber McGee and Molly programs are short waves each week to our armed forces throughout the world. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night when we present a new and distinctive program featuring Meredith Wilson and John Nesbitt. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>